Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. In this episode of the Serial Killer series, I shall be delving into the disturbed killer James Del Ritchie, known as the Midnight Sun Killer, a dangerous individual who kept Anchorage, Alaska citizens on alert and in a state of fear back in the summer months of 2016. Hope you enjoy. It was early morning on July 3rd of 2016 when two bodies were discovered near to a bike path close to Ship Creek at 7.45am. Police arrived on scene and were able to determine the victim identities. They were 20-year-old Brianna Foisy and 41-year-old Jason Netta Sr. Investigators indicated that they'd both been ambushed on the bike path sometime between 3 and 5am and both had been gunned down. On seeking a potential suspect of the crime, victim background checks were conducted and CCTV recordings from the immediate area were gathered. Brianna was known to have spent time in homeless shelters and Jason had a criminal record for drug activity. The victim's relationship status was unknown and investigators assumed that they were both sleeping rough based on their personal belongings being recovered at the crime scene. Clearly, the victims were leading difficult lives. This would present a challenge for the investigation as a motive for the killings was not immediately obvious. Could the pair have been victims of a robbery gone wrong or did someone have a personal conflict with Jason or Brianna? The double murder would go cold and all leads would dry up relatively fast. The only evidence that investigators would locate would be bullet fragments which confirmed the murder weapon, a 357 Colt Python. Local residents were concerned about the double murder. Crimes like that don't occur in Anchorage. Was this the start of something more sinister? 26 days later, local residents and the police would get their answer. Travion Kindell Thompson was 21 years old when his body was found in a residential area, his body having been pierced by bullets. His murder had been caught partially on video after 3am and the killer had gunned him down before stealing his bicycle and riding away into the darkness. Patterns were now emerging. A killer was on the loose and targeting people out in the early morning hours. Testing of the bullet fragments would confirm the weapon used in the murder to be the same exact 357 Colt Python. Fortunately, investigators had some eyewitnesses to the murder, along with CCTV footage. Three teenage girls having a sleepover had described hearing gunshots in the early morning hours. On looking outside, their confusion to the loud noises transformed into horror as they witnessed a tall man wearing a camouflage jacket standing over the body of Travion before riding away on his yellow bicycle. A composite sketch artist was brought into the investigation to generate leads and a detailed sketch of the killer was soon drawn up. Based on the CCTV footage and sketch, Investigators were confident that the killer would soon be off the street. However, they were well aware that this was someone who would continue hunting people until he was put away. Anchorage citizens didn't want to risk going out in the early morning hours. The level of danger was at an all-time high by this point. Travion had been heading home after work and the three teenage girls who were having a sleepover had actually seen the killer creeping about in the woods nearby prior to the shooting. Shockingly, Travion's murder stands out from the rest of the killings. The killer and Travion shared a unique connection. That connection was Bobby Thompson, Travion's father. Bobby and the killer had been good friends in their youth. Before we head further, let's cover some of the backstory on the killer, James Dale Ritchie. James Dale Ritchie grew up in Anchorage. Being six foot three, James inevitably ended up on the East Anchorage High School basketball and football teams. He was a highly successful and promising athlete, earning a place at West Virginia University to play football. In 1994, Richie would be hit by a sudden loss when his best friend, Quincy Thompson, was killed in a shooting. James quickly deteriorated into drug use and lost contact with Quincy's brother, Bobby Thompson. James dropped out of university after a semester and began to indulge himself in a life of crime. He left Virginia and returned to Alaska, and developed a street reputation and a nickname, Tiny. Over the next 10 years, James distanced himself from his promising future and transformed into a thug. In 2005, he was taken into custody, having been caught exiting a house, having committed a burglary. Police found $5,487 on his person, and he was kitted out in the typical burglar clothing, with black gloves and a dark knit beanie. 
only receiving two years in prison, he was released on November the 16th of 2007 and would purchase a 357 Colt Python shortly upon his release. James relocated in 2013 back down to Virginia where his parents were living. James had handed over the 357 to a friend in Anchorage and knew that he ought to keep it in the hands of a trusted friend. He'd be back one day to collect it. In March 2016, James would return to Anchorage, collect the gun and end up in a trailer park. Apparently, James tried to seek mental health treatment, but like with many people on the edge, the warning signs would not be noticed until it was too late. Media reports about the likelihood of a serial killer spread across the city. The FBI put up a $10,000 reward for information about the killer of Travion. They didn't want to confirm that a serial killer was active and running rampant in Anchorage. The reason for this being that it would spark more fear and the killer might toss away the 357 Colt Python. At that point, their killer might never be caught. It was early in the morning on August 28th when two more bodies turned up, this time in the Valley of the Moon dog park. They were quickly identified as being 34-year-old Kevin Turner and 25-year-old Bree de Husson. The two bodies were spread out from one another and it appeared as though Bree had stumbled upon Kevin being murdered. Kevin was suffering from psychological issues and was determined to have been living homeless at the time. Bree was an environmental activist in Anchorage at the time and was believed to have been riding a bike which unexpectedly rode upon the encounter. Upon seeing Bree, the killer switched his target to silence another eyewitness. An investigation would determine the murder weapon matched, the same one used to gun down the other victims, and on September the 6th of 2016, a press conference would be held to discuss the recent shootings. Gang violence was put forth as the reason being for the high levels of homicides in Anchorage at this time and the presence of an active serial killer was simply glossed over. The public were likely pretty aware of that possibility by this point. The same killer MO and rapid succession of murders further supported an active serial killer theory. No more victims turned up in the next few months as police received suspect tips and followed up on leads. It would be early morning on November the 12th of 2016 that some answers would finally come to light. A taxi driver called police to report an unpaid fare. Police arrived in the area and located the tall suspect who failed to comply with their commands to stop walking and to turn around. Video footage from the patrol car shows the suspect suddenly spin around and walk towards the patrol car, firing shots at the officers. One officer was hit six times, but fortunately, more officers quickly arrived and subsequently returned fire, bringing down the six foot three suspect. An unpaid taxi fare would result in the death of James Dale Ritchie. Now residing in the morgue, his 357 Colt Python would be linked to five murders in Anchorage. Police were stunned and relieved to find out that the killer was finally off the streets. James had been closely paying attention to the media attention, focused on his murders. A motive is unlikely to ever surface, but based on what I've seen, when serial killers use firearms, the offender tends to be seeking a thrill rather than being sexually motivated. Mental health certainly played a part in the deterioration of James Dale Ritchie, but also in the targeting of his victims, I'd imagine. With many of his victims also suffering with mental health conditions, some of his victims seemingly had nowhere and nobody to turn toward for assistance. Could any of this have been prevented? We see cases like this time and time again, more so now given the pandemic and mental health issues rising by the day. The offender only served two years for burglary and wasn't even on police radar to even be associated with the crimes. James Dale Ritchie targeted both visible and invisible people, those who work jobs and those who are out of work and living rough and homeless on the streets. The worst part is, is that James Dale Ritchie was also an invisible person. A serial killer hiding in plain sight, free to roam and hunt with impunity for months. His invisibility to society only made him that much more difficult to catch. I can only imagine how much higher the victim total could have been if he hadn't have been brought down. Much like Israel Keyes, he travelled down to the lower 48. It is unknown how many victims he might be responsible for elsewhere. This has been another episode of the Serial Killer series. As always, thanks for watching.